you understood the construction of a research title. So the next uh, thing that we will do is we are going to formulate problems or statement of the problems. So isa-isahin natin na let us uh, think first na ang title natin ay itong number one example natin which is basic competencies gained in mathematics a basis for the development of a bridging course module in mathematics. Now this is the statement, these are the statement of the problems. No? First, since this is quantitative, so this is the style of SOP construction or statement of the problem construction when it is quantitative. When it is quantitative, you can have uh, the first statement of the problem, which is the profile problem. Now, ano yun? How may the social demographic profile of the senior high school graduate respondents be described based on 1.1 is sex, age, and strength. Notice this carefully. Kung kayo ay magpa-quantitative, kinakailangan, at you want to add up the profile of the respondents, yung, yung pag-introduce natin ng statement of the problem, maybe how may or what is, what is the profile, Kung hindi puro sociodemographic yun, tanggalin nyo na si sociodemographic. Pwede ang ilagay niyo how may the profile of the respondents. Pero kung sociodemographic lang siya, sige, pwede nyo ilagay yung sociodemographic profile. Now, pwede rin naman, what is the profile of the respondents in terms of? Or how may the profile of the respondents be described in terms of? Ngayon, Kung may base on or in terms of kayo na nakahan, may colon doon. Kinakailangan may colon doon. After the colon, dahil under siya sa number 1, lalagyan nyo ng 1.1 sex, semicolon yung kasunod nun, and then yung 1.2, ilagay nyo yung susunod na profile variable, semicolon ulit, at kung yung kasunod na niya, ang pinakahuli, you place n and then 1.3 you add up the last variable dahil siya ng last variable question mark taken as one sentence sila okay taken as one sentence sila okay now um para mo lang identify yung profile okay hindi to para nihan ng profile hindi to para nihan ng profile variable kung hindi your main thought is this I am considering this profile variable kasi naiisip ko o nauobserbahan ko na parang may difference o may relationship siya dun sa main variable ko. Ibig sabihin, nakaka-apekto, feeling ko kasi nakaka-apekto yung sex doon sa gaining ng mathematics competency. Kasi parang naobserbahan ko, mas okay yung mga lalaki sa mat kesa sa mga babae. So dahil meron akong observation na ganun, I would like to prove my observation. So because I would like to prove that, under my study, I will place sex. By the way, we don't use gender, we use sex. Gender is based on preference. Sex is biological. So we go into using the term sex. Now, the next one is age. Ganun din. Meron bang age differences? If yes, then place it there. If not, then don't place it anymore. Lalo na, don't place age at all times. Lalo na kung ang focus nyo ay isang year level lang. Sa year level lang yung focus nyo. Tapos, doon sa uh, pagtitignan mo yung mismo profile na age, pare-pareho lang ng age range. So, kung pare-pareho lang halos ng age range, huwag yun nang ilagay kasi hindi, mag, hindi magiging significant yung age doon sa study nyo. Dito sa study na to, nakalagay yung age because we know for a fact that for senior high schools, nagbabari talaga yung mga edad nila. Kasi meron yung mga out-of-school youth na before na nagbabalik sa pag-aaral, so mas older sila yung sa usual age ng senior high school students. And then the strength. The strength refers to saan ba siya, um, ano ba yung strength na kinukuha niya, na academic strength na kinukuha niya. Siya ba ay Humes, siya ba ay STEM, or others. Okay? 
So, yun yung social demographic profile niya. So, tignan niyo mabuti ha, hindi sobrang dotang ng profile. Kung hindi yung lang observe na may pagkakaiba. Now, the next problem, this problem number 2, the statement of the problem number 2, should be focusing now on your main variable. Kung ang main variable nyo isa lang, then, nandun na siya sa number 2, yun lang yun. Pero kung dalawa yung main variable niyo, katulad dun sa statement of the problem natin kanina na language proficiency and attitude towards modular, modular learning, yun yung ating number 2 na uh, title example. So since dalawa, dalawa yung statement of the problem, eh, sorry, dalawa yung variable niya, which is yung una, attitude, at yung una is um, language proficiency, Yung pangalawa naman is attitude towards modular, modular learning. Then, yung variables should fall in statement of the problem number two. All about, yung sa first variable na language proficiency. Number three naman, dun sa second variable which is attitude towards modular, modular learning. So, yun yung magiging number two and number three ninyo kailangan magkasunod yung variable ninyo dun sa statement of the problem. At laging nag-start sa number 2 after the profile yung variables na nandun sa title. So, dito sa case ng ating example, sabi dito, how may the competencies gained of senior high school graduates in basic mathematics be described in terms of communicating and strategic thinking? In this case, dalawa lang yung basic uh, competency na gustong i-identify ng researcher. Ito yung limitation niya. Okay? So, tingnan ninyo mabuti ha. Ang difference sa quantitative at sa qualitative study, yung sa statement of the problem niya, sa quantitative, predefined, predefined, yung variables na gusto niya alamin yung progress o yung difference. Dito, tingnan ninyo mabuti. Dito, since quantitative siya, in-identify niya kung ano-ano itong mga basic competencies na nag-gain. Communicating and strategic thinking. Itong dalawa na ito ay classification ng basic competencies in mathematics. So, kung mag identify na kung ano-ano itong mga skills na ito, ano-ano itong mga competencies na ito, ano-ano itong mga dimensions ng variable ninyo. It's just that you are going to prove that it is really affecting the respondents or kung ano among these variables ang pinakamababa o pinakamataas, ang strongest or ang weakest. Yun yung sa quantitative study. While sa qualitative, wala kang ilalagay na ganyan. Wala kang ilalagay na variables. Na, sorry, na sub-variable or dimension ng variable mo. Okay? And Aside from that, when it comes to quantitative study, there has to be a theoretical framework or a conceptual framework from which makikita mo mismo na nakadefine itong mismo mga dimensions ng variable mo. Yun ang magsaserve as the basis of your study. Eh, magpapano yun? So, i-inventohin lang ba namin itong mga variables na ito? I mean, itong mga dimensions na ito or sub-variables na ito ng aming mga main variable o ng aming dependent at independent variable? No, you cannot do that. But, there has to be a supporting literature telling us that these dimensions are really under the variable. Halimbawa, itong basic mathematics competencies na communicating and strategic thinking ay nanggaling sa isang author, sa isang theory. Halimbawa, Lakong 2019. O, di ba? Halimbawa, ang, ang, ang origin nitong mga concepts na ito ay galing sa study ni Ma'am Katrina Lakong. O, dahil galing sa study ni Ma'am Katrina Lakong, ito ay according to Lakong 2019. At yung mismo concept na yan, makikita ko yan sa theoretical framework or sa conceptual framework nyo. At naka-enumerate si communicating at si strategic thinking. Okay? Pagka walang theory, 
stay with the concept kasi dito namang uh, basic competencies gained in mathematics or yung basic competencies na ito is not really a theory it's more of a concept so dun siya nakalagay sa conceptual framework okay but there is a good news kapag ka qualitative ang study walang theoretical framework yun ang pinaka maganda doon okay bakit kasi sa qualitative study yung yung mismo uh, findings ninyo yun ang pwedeng maging theory in the future Kasi yun ay talagang solely ng galing sa mga respondents mo at in-identify nila mismo yun. Okay? Ibig sabihin, sa qualitative study, kayo ang bubuo ng mga ideas na communicating, strategic thinking. Kayo ang bubuo nun sa findings. Sa findings, ang makikita sa inyo, what are the basic competencies gained in mathematics based on the findings of the study? The um, basic competencies gained in mathematics are strategic thinking and communicating. Pass yun sa interview niyo sa mga estudyante niyo. Okay? Clear yun na? So, dapat sa quantitative, merong author yung sub-variables. Pwede mo ba yung sa profile? Hindi na. Yun lang sa main variables niyo. So, kung dalawa yung variable niyo, dapat yung mga pinagsusulat niyo under dun sa 1.1, 1.2 ay merong theoretical uh, basis or conceptual basis. Okay? Now, since um, you only have one, two, three, and four statement of the problem, we go now to the third one. Sa third one, lagi niyong tatandaan ito. Kung meron ba yung profile at ginamit niyo itong profile variable niyo sa statement of the problem number one, automatically, after the problem statement ng dalawang variable ninyo o ng isang variable ninyo, ang kasunod doon ay yung correlation ng profile at ng variables. Okay? So, ano yung correlation ng profile at ng variables? So, ito. Is there a significant relationship between the competencies gained in mathematics and Is there a significant relationship between unahin natin yung the profile of the respondents and the competencies gained in mathematics. Okay, sana naiintindihan niyo yung mga pinagsusulat ko, no? Tingnan niyo mabuti. Tapos, question mark. Tingnan niyo mabuti, ha? Is there a significant relationship between the social demographic profile ng ginamit dito? So, kailangan pala yung mga gamitin niyo. Between the social demographic profile of the senior high school graduate respondents and the competency gain in basic mathematics. So, kumpaga, yung statement of the problem number 3 natin ay yung correlation na number 1 at number 2. How do you, how do you uh, state it? Ganito lang. Is there a significant relationship between the social demographic profile of the senior high school graduate respondents and the competencies gained in basic mathematics. Okay. So that will be SOP number 3. Okay. Medyo i-reconstruct mo na lang ha. Mas better po. Is there a significant relationship between the social demographic profile and and competent, the competencies gained uh, in basic mathematics of the senior high school students, senior high school students, graduate respondents. Question mark. Okay? At yung is there a significant uh, relationship na yun, yun yung inferential statistics. Ituturo sa inyo in the future at yun yung gagawan nyo ng hypothesis. Okay? Doon sa mga quantitative study, yun yung gagawa nila ng hypothesis. Difference ulit, kapag quantitative, hypothesis yung gagawin. Kapag qualitative, ang tawag na yun doon ay assumption. Walang hypothesis, assumption lang. Now, since 
isa lang yung ating um, isa lang yung ating variable ang pinakahuli na sa statement of the problem ay yung output ano yung output? you just stated as what proposed bridging course module kasi ito yung nakalagay dun sa title nyo what proposed bridging course module in mathematics may be developed based on the findings of the study it depends sa inyo kung ano yung output nyo. Pwede yung uh, enhancement lang siya. So, halimbawa, meron na talagang module na ginawa sa bridging program. So, hindi siya development, enhancement. So, ang dapat na uh, maging statement nyo is what proposed enhancements for the bridging course module in mathematics may be direction nyo. Or how may the bridging course module in mathematics be enhanced based on the findings of the study. So yun, kung enhancement lang siya. Okay, pwede din naman na what um, a strategic information guidelines may be developed based on the findings of the study. So it depends upon you. It depends upon the output which suits your statement of the problem or the focus of your study. So that's how you construct the statement of the problem. Just be reminded of that if you have two variables, those variables should be in your statement of the problem. In number two and in number three, and then in number four, the comparison of your variables. Number five will be the relationship among the variables. You will have three there. So yung tatlo na yun should be, uh, should have relationship or correlation um, statement of the problem and then lastly you have your output the output is always in the last item it's always in the last statement of the problem so thank you very much i hope you learned something today um, tomorrow we are going to discuss the construction of statement of the problem in qualitative research thank you so much